healthy snacks or sugar bombs, shelf-stable staples or local economy killers. Some canned fruits should stock your pantry, others are best left at the store. Let's explore which cans are worth your dollar. The majority of pineapples consumed in the U.S. are imported from Mexico or Central and South America, while fruits that are grown on American soil come from Hawaii, Puerto Rico, and small-scale farms in Florida, Georgia, and California. This regal fruit is available year-round, but it still has a limited growing season. When you purchase pineapple during its prime months, it'll be the sweetest and juiciest of the year. Like all canned produce, pineapples are picked at the peak of the season ensuring that you get the maximum nutritional benefits and flavor. That said, pineapple production can still fall victim to natural disasters, pests, and a whole host of negative external impacts that affect the size, flavor, and price. That's one reason why you should keep canned pineapple at home. You won't have to deal with inflated prices or subpar fruits. Nutritionally, pineapples are chock full of vitamin C, B vitamins, manganese, potassium, and magnesium, to name just a few. They're also the only fruit to contain the enzyme bromelain, which has anti-inflammatory properties and has been known to suppress the growth of certain cancerous tumors. Fruit cocktails are iconic and steeped in American culture. In fact, you've probably encountered the snack at least once in your life. It's thought that this rainbow-colored canned good arrived on the scene sometime around 1930. In post-World War II America, it was considered a healthy alternative for families who had limited access to fruit. And while accessibility has changed a bit since then, fruit cocktail is so celebrated that it even has its own national holiday. But what exactly is it? Believe it or not, the FDA has some strict guidelines about what constitutes a true canned fruit cocktail. It's true. It has to contain 30% to 50% diced peaches, 25% to 45% diced pears, 6% to 16% diced pineapple, 6% to 20% whole seedless grapes, and 2% to 6% sweet cherries. Sounds great, right? So what's the problem? Well, one cup of canned fruit cocktail contains 44.4 grams of sugar. Excuse me, what? Oh yeah. And it gets worse when you realize the American Heart Association recommends a maximum of 36 grams of sugar for men and 25 grams of sugar for women daily. We're talking about 100% pumpkin puree, not canned pumpkin pie filling. That canned sibling is a totally different and not so versatile animal. Canned pumpkin, on the other hand, has had a bit of a hectic past. When news broke out that it wasn't made using your typical orange jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin, people fell into a fit. Pumpkin puree is actually made with the Dickinson pumpkin, whose origin can be traced back to the mid-1830s. It's also not really a pumpkin, but a squash posing as one. Dickinson pumpkins are known for their bountiful flesh because unlike their grim grinning relatives, they aren't hollow. They can also reach upwards of 30 pounds, making them the beast of the pumpkin patch and perfect for canning and definitely worth keeping on hand. Why? Well, you see, this multifaceted fruit, yes, a pumpkin is technically a fruit, is packed with vitamins and minerals. One cup of cooked pumpkin contains 245% of your daily recommended value of vitamin A, which is important for your eyes and cells. Pumpkin can also be used for more than just pie. It's great in soups, curries, and even hummus. In their natural state, berries are at their best in the summer months, starting from May until the beginning of September. Once their season is over, the price begins to hike up while the quality decreases. Your berries will be smaller, duller, sometimes shriveled, and basically lifeless. These little fruits are full of antioxidants, like anthocyanin, resveratrol, and ellagic acid. According to experts, anthocyanins give these fruits their color and help protect them from the elements. Though the research is still in the preliminary stages, berries and other fruits high in anthocyanins might help reduce the risk of heart disease and contribute to preventing breast cancer. It may seem smart to keep canned berries in your home, but there's one major health-defying ingredient you're going to want to look into first. Sugar. 
The U.S. Highbush Blueberry Council states that a one-cup serving of fresh blueberries contains 14 grams of natural sugar, while the same serving size of frozen blueberries contains 12 grams. When it comes to canned blueberries and light syrup no less, a half-cup serving contains 22 grams of sugar. Do you keep a few dozen fresh coconuts in a coconut grater on hand for those moments when you're in dire need of coconut milk? No, should I? Not at all. In fact, it's much easier to just keep a few cans of coconut milk on hand. When you're out shopping to restock your pantry, keep in mind that canned coconut milk comes in a few different forms. For starters, coconut cream can be found in both a carton and a can. It has a higher fat content that gives it a rich, smooth, and thick consistency, which makes it an excellent candidate for non-dairy recipes. Coconut milk is also available in a can and a carton, but the latter is typically meant for drinking and less for cooking. Coconut milk packaged in cartons usually contains additives and sweeteners with a thinner texture. Canned coconut milk is the midway point between the two. It's still pourable, but it's thicker and more viscous, much like heavy cream. Canned coconut milk is an amazingly versatile food item that successfully crosses into both sweet and savory recipes. Besides being tasty, coconut milk is darn healthy. It contains antioxidants and antimicrobials, which help keep your body free from disease, as well as medium-chain triglycerides, which help convert fat into energy. The maraschino cherry has sat upon the tops of sundaes, swam around in cocktails, and been suspended in jello molds. The bright red cherries were first created in the late 1920s. Wealthy Americans brought preserved maraschino cherries over from Europe, and Oregon farmers wanted to compete. The problem with this particular cherry, the Queen Anne, was that it spoiled quickly and basically turned to mush when undergoing preservation methods. So a professor from Oregon State University created the preservation process that's still used today. Oregonian food scientists piggybacked on this recipe and created a process that included bleaching the cherries so that they could be dyed unnaturally bright colors. What? Cherries aren't naturally that red. Maraschino cherries do have one or two legit purposes. For example, they're good on Sundays and a key ingredient in a Shirley Temple. However, keeping multiple jars stashed away for snacking probably isn't the best move. By the time they reach the jar, they're no longer really cherries. Stone fruits include pretty much any fruit containing a large pit. Peaches, plums, apricots, and nectarines are a few examples. According to the Seasonal Food Guide in the Northern Hemisphere, stone fruits typically only grow during the summer months from June or July until late August or early September. Besides, having a relatively short season, stone fruits fall under the quickly perishable category. They're incredibly delicate, and with one small bruise, you can expect the lifespan of that sweet fleshed fruit to seemingly dwindle overnight. And what do you do if you end up with a bunch of fruit that's all about to go bad? I don't know. Well, you either eat them, freeze them, or can them as is, or turn them into jam or jelly. To make matters worse, the past two years have had a profound impact on the cost of stone fruit production. California's Central Valley is responsible for growing more than 80% of the country's stone fruit. California's stone fruit industry costs have risen 45% since 2020, which is ultimately reflected at the cash register. So in this case, keeping canned stone fruits in your cupboards is an economical way to get your off-season fix. You know it's apple season when the leaves on the trees start turning warm reds and oranges and pumpkin spice treats make their annual appearance. The fruit's main harvest season is late August through mid-November, which is when you'll taste it in the way that nature intended. Bright, flavorful, sweet, and crisp. From a shopping perspective, one of the best qualities of apples is that you can purchase them year-round, and they're still pretty affordable. While an apple a day is said to keep the doctor away, canned apples probably aren't as beneficial. In fact, they could even have a negative impact on your overall health. One serving of canned apple slices contains 30.6 grams of sugar. The same serving size of fresh apples entails consuming a mere 13 grams of sugar. Because fresh apples are so readily available, there's really no reason to purchase canned apples, unless you're making pie. Even then, homemade pie filling is pretty simple to make and doesn't include the syrup and additives you'll find in the packaged versions. Canned tomatoes are sometimes avoided by consumers for fear of botulism or BPA. 
Luckily, botulism generally only occurs in low-acid foods or those that are processed using poor home canning techniques. Therefore, it's relatively uncommon for these little red globes of goodness to cause this deadly illness. Still afraid of BPA-laced cans? Don't be. BPA-lined cans are no longer used by U.S. tomato packing facilities. Plus, the label typically indicates whether a can is BPA-free or not. In their fresh form, tomatoes are packed full of vitamins and minerals like calcium, potassium, and folate. But canned tomatoes have a little extra trick. As they are cooked, the heat actually opens up the fruit's cell membranes. Kind of like the way steam opens up your pores during a facial. This means that your body now has the ability to absorb even more of the plentiful antioxidants and nutrients tomatoes have to offer, especially the cancer-fighting compound lycopene. So in the case of the magical tomato, fresh is great, but so is canned. Yet another fruit that should be added to the iBrews Easily list. Pears come in over 3,000 varieties worldwide. All the same, you're probably most familiar with Bartlett, Bosque, and Anjou. These fruits are touted as being packed full of water, fiber, and fructose, making them ideal for individuals with digestive issues. They're definitely considered high in sugar, with 14 grams per cup. Canned pears in their own juice or light syrup contain even more sugar per serving, and those in heavy syrup are even worse. But the biggest reason you should consider abstaining from canned pears is that, depending on the brand, whatever's inside likely does not come from the United States. Since 2001, consumers have shown more interest in fresh pears, which has negatively impacted the Washington and Oregon canned pear industry. It doesn't help that the U.S. imports canned pears from China because they're several dollars cheaper than those canned locally. 